Let's see how this one is. Please don't be bent. Oh gosh. Hey me butts, I'm back and today I am decked out in Barbie and my PJs and my slippers. Oh no, I need new slippers. <laughs> If you follow my posts on YouTube at all, then you would know that this past weekend, or whenever you're watching this, Saturday, March the 9th, was Barbie's 60th anniversary. I was really excited about it, and I kind of let everybody who does follow know that I would be attending my local Toys R Us Barbie anniversary event. Sorry if you didn't know, but we still have Toys R Us here. It was really fun. I was really stoked for it. I took both kids, and we had a blast. While we were there, we got to do some pretty fun stuff, which included coloring and taking home our very own Barbie dresses. I think that was a collaboration with Crayola. And we also got to decorate, eat, and take home cookies celebrating Barbie's anniversary. And they were delicious, not gonna lie. I took a lot of photos, oh. I took a lot of photos while I was there, but I'm not really gonna share those because I've decided I'm gonna kind of phase my kids out. Uh, you might notice a lack of their involvement lately, and that's because I want them to have their own personal life. So, bye bye kids. <laughs> while we were there, they did have a lot of fun though, so just trust me, just take my word for it. While I was at the event, there was a few special things that we could take advantage of, which included super low priced items. Handbags, dolls, accessories, play sets, stuff like that. So today I'm going to show you what I picked up because my impulse control is zip and we're going to open them up at the other table which I know you guys sometimes prefer. All the career Barbies were marked down to $8 each so both children picked dolls that they wanted and we also grabbed a play set and a play set for me. My son chose to grab the barista doll because he knows how much I love coffee and hot chocolate and he thought it would be fun to have that. My daughter chose this doctor and we also grabbed another doctor, except that this one is a veterinarian, still a doctor, for animals. And then I had my eyes on this astronaut Barbie. But there's there's a real thing here. <laughs> I wanted one of these really bad. I turned around and they were gone. And I was like really, really sad about it. And then a really helpful worker named Jen found me another one. She came back and she's like, look, who's the best? And it's obviously Jen's. If there was ever a doubt, now you know. So Jen, if you're watching, thank you for the astronaut doll. I super love it. <laughs> and then we we also grabbed a play set. For this event only, this $50 vet clinic was marked down by half, which explains why we picked up the two doctors, because most of the larger play sets do not have a doll included. And then the last play set that I got when I was there was for me, and it was exciting. The Barbie Beekeeper. Woo! I don't even think I need to explain why this is great, just know that it is. And also, if it could get any better, it did, because the beekeeper unit, hive thing, I'm not a beekeeper, uh, it is teal, so. Lastly, when I was there, I was given this amazing poster celebrating 60 years of Barbie's careers. Wait, that rhymes and I didn't even notice. There are 60 different ones that they've chosen to display here, but Barbie has had well over 200 careers, so do not let this limit what you think she's done. And before I move over to the table, I'm gonna give you one quick story because I think it is worth sharing. In reference to Barbie's careers, I wanted to know if she had ever been a welder. And so I messaged Mattel on Twitter asking, and they said, no, but we love where your idea is heading. They sent me a link where I could go suggest that idea. And uh, I guess when people suggest ideas, if anyone finds it great, they turn it into a doll. So I was really excited. I followed the link and I started to wait and wait and wait and the page never loaded and I refreshed it and it never loaded and I refreshed it again. And then I tried it from a different browser and finally it just said that it was not an available page. I messaged Mattel again saying, hey, like, what's up? And they said, oh, I'm sorry, it's not available in your country. Well, that doesn't make any sense to me considering there's no exchange of goods or services. It's literally me giving you an idea so I don't feel like that should have a virtual border barrier. It would be like me telling Sue and Steve and Bob and Terry out in Connecticut, hey, you should try this chocolate bar mixed with yogurt. It might be a great idea. There's no reason why they can't hear that suggestion just because they're far away, you know? So I was pretty bummed out about that. So Mattel, if you're watching this, I think you should consider making a welder career Barbie because well, I already gave you a good reason for it in my message. But if you do, just remember, I gave you that idea in Canada. Thanks. <laughs> Without further ado, let's move on over to the other table and open our new stuff. Okay, now we're at the table and we can take a look at our individual dolls. I'm finding it pretty interesting that none of these dolls say the name of who they are. Technically this is Barbie and this is Barbie. Maybe it's not Barbie. Maybe it's a Barbie lookalike, you know what I mean? And why doesn't the brace to have a name? I mean, we could assume it's Ken, but Ken usually looks different, so. And who is this? I don't know her name. I want her to be called Jenny because she's got brown eyes and black hair like me. And this is me if I was a vet and tall. You know what? 
you've just been named Jenny. Now that that's all over, it's time to open these up. Let's start with Nameless Doll. I'm gonna call him Steve. Let's start with Steve. Mostly because he does not deserve the satisfaction of not looking directly at us. Your bee butts wanna see you. My barista is gonna lie down so he can see me open it. Oh, he was just in there. See, he's so tall. That's what you see. We're gonna have to bend him. Let's look at him up close this way for it. Oh, I can't even bend him. Come on now. What is happening? Ah, yeah, good enough. Not everything is good to be filmed over in tabletop version. Here is our barista named Steve. He's got some perfect brown eyes and eyebrows. Nice chiseled looking face, very nice sculpted hair. Clearly it's not going to have any bald spots and I'm not noticing any paint defects either. His head goes all the way around. His arms go up and down and up and down like he's some kind of weird bird. Back and front, ooh, like Lego jumping jacks. One, <laughs> two, ah. Uh. Three. That's how stiff I look when I try to exercise. Don't worry, Steve. I feel ya. His top is all in one piece, so it's just printed directly on. Even if it looks like there's more to it, there's not. I don't see any loose stitches or anything like that. And to be honest, this is the best I've ever seen of doll clothing. Like, it's really clean. You can barely even see the Velcro there. What's under here? Abs and muscles, that's all. Oh, and he's even got some sculpted underwear. They say Ken, so is he Ken? Or does Ken just have an underwear business? I don't know. He does not bend at the elbow, so he's gonna be very stiff when handing you your coffee. Uh, make sure you just take it. Take it directly from him. Do not cause him any grief. These are the pants. He's got some white flat shoes on. They slip on and off. And they say Ken on the bottom too, so maybe Ken has been busy starting shoe companies. Barbie has a lot of careers, maybe Ken does as well. So it looks like the only points of articulation for him are his head up and down and in and out for his shoulders, but nothing at the wrist or elbow. He moves at the pelvis, but not at the waist, not at the knee, and not at the ankle. And that is it for Steve. Thanks for coming out and thanks for the coffee. Oh yeah, and there's his coffee cup. It's just solid white. <laughs> Does he stand unassisted? He can stand. Yeah. That's another good thing about flat soles. Let's do the Dr. Barbie once again. Too tall to see. Let's get to it. Ow. Oh, she's actually strapped in. I guess people are more inclined to try to steal a Barbie maybe. Who knows? Here is our Barbie. She looks Fabulous. So the only problem I'm having right now is that her hair is all chopped all kinds of crazy and it's really frustrating to me. I'm happy to see that she doesn't have any bald spots and she's got a lot of good rooting, just that her hair is terrible and I'm going to have to give her a haircut, which is kind of frustrating because, I mean, I mean, we got her on sale, so I can't complain. But the point is, if you paid full price for her, you'd be really annoyed that her hair looks like that. We looked at her outfit briefly through the package, but now we can see that the inside is white too with pink stitching. Does it come off? Is it removable separate from the dress? It sure is. She can go from being a doctor by day to going out on the town at night. Man, she just looks great. Because of her realistic shape, which I'm loving, this would not be one of the dolls where you could pull a cord and have a long dress turn into a short dress. That wouldn't work for this doll. I also super duper love her flats and that they match her outfit and they're easy to remove. Wait, these have Barbie's logo on the bottom. So both Barbie and Ken design shoes. Is she wearing any Ken branded underwear? No. <laughs> How would we undress her if we got a different outfit for her? Can we take this off? Give her some privacy. But you can take her outfit off. That means it is possible to give her different looks if you find outfits in store. To see where she's articulated, she can go all the way around, up and down. Nothing at the elbow, nothing at the wrist. Her head has good movement. Not at the waist, not at the knee, and not at the ankle. And now we'll check her face. She's got bright blue eyes, a nice pale pink lipstick, and perfectly sculpted brows. No paint defects. So the only issues I'm having with this doll is honestly just the hair. <laughs> they even gave the ear things on the stethoscope. Oh, that's cool. Put that back on her, one, so I don't lose it, and two, so that she can get back to work. Check if she stands on her own. Oh, for a second I thought it was gonna be a yes. Whoop. Oh no, now she's gonna need a doctor. And now we'll page Dr. Jenny. This is not her real name. This is just what I'm calling her. And uh, there's only a one in a billion chance that that's her name, so let's do it. But of course we have to get a little lower because she's too tall. She's super attached as well. Check out our puppy first, cause why not, right? Oh my goodness. How cute is that puppy? It's just a light caramel brown color with a cute little nose and cute little eyes. Not seeing any paint defects or anything, so that's really good. And uh, yeah. 
Here is Vet Jenny, and I am happy to report that her hair is much better, but it still does have a little bit of that distress. By a little, I mean quite a bit. It is still choppy, but not as choppy. Let's check you for some bald spots. Her hair is incredibly soft. Nicely rooted all the way through. She has a very bright cat-like eyes. They're brown. They're very pretty. Her eyebrows are perfect. Her face is perfect. She just looks like super professional. Her stethoscope is black. Here it is, and it goes directly into the ears. It's funny to see how different they are. She's got the same type of doctor coat. It's all white, no pockets, and underneath she's got a two-piece outfit. It's pinkish red color with blue stripes and then a blue pencil skirt. Just like the other dolls, this one can go around and around, up or down, but cannot bend at the elbow or wrist. She has no articulation at the knee or ankle, just at the hips or the pelvis. I don't even know. And then she's wearing some white Crocs. And who are they branded by? Barbie. She bought them from the Barbie store. I guess the guys only buy Ken branded stuff. The girls only buy Barbie. See you later, Jenny. And now, astronaut Barbie. Wait, we forgot to give her back her stethoscope. There you go. And now, oh, and lastly, she does not stand alone either. And now, astronaut Barbie. Come on, Jen. It's not happening. The more careful I'm trying to be, the more I've destroyed it. <laughs> Wait a minute. One. Two, three, ooh. Dun, 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 dun. That's one small step for Barbie. Wait, there's no gravity. She just fell because suddenly gravity came back. She is wearing a completely white outfit for the most part with blue printed stuff on it to make it look like pockets and lines and, 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 and stuff. And here's her helmet. It's all white, it says Barbie on the back. It's got some hoses clear in the front and we pop it off. Oop like so. Whoa, I didn't expect her hair to be short. It's hard and crispy. If you don't want it to look like that forever, you're gonna have to comb out a little bit of that glue. There we go. That's a bit nicer. It obviously looked a little cleaner when it was glued together, but this just looks more natural. Now we can check out her face. It's very, very clean. Bright blue eyes, good sculpted brows, and that's about it. Just like that last doll, she is permanently positioned with a bent elbow. She was up, down, all the way around. She's a little constricted by her outfit, but she can and go all the way around. No bending at the elbow or the wrist. Her hands are so tiny once you take off these massive gloves. I wonder if this would fit on Ken. We should try it in a sec. Take off the other one. Boop. Expose her to the elements. Check the quality. There you go. I see one or two strings. These are on the inside. It's funny that the other dolls had better hidden seams and stuff. And this is the 60th anniversary one. Am I the only one who finds that humorous? Probably. Nobody else cares. And this is all one piece. It would come off just as one jumper. What's happening with her creepy hand? What's going on there? Has anyone else ever had a Barbie with that creepy hand? Just stare at it. You can bend the fingers. So I'm thinking that when somebody put the glove on, it pushed right up against her finger and now she's permanently stuck like that. That's annoying. Let's move on. She can go up and down and in and out at the hip like the other dolls. Nothing at the knee and nothing at the ankle. But she's wearing these giant moon boots, once again by Barbie. I'm wondering if these will help her to stand upright on her own. I know you can't see her face, just deal with it. And they do! Check her out with her creepy finger. Standing tall and proud. <laughs> Alright, time to get her all geared back up because you know this is super protective and uh, we need her to be safe when she's out in space. By the way, with a bit of struggle and uh, stick to itiveness, you can make Steve or Ken dolls wear the space glove. <laughs> All right guys, those are the four single dolls that I had. Slowly moving the camera. What are you doing, Jen? Stop it. Try that again. Here are the four single dolls that we opened. They are looking fabulous and I think I even got Jenny to stand upright on her own. It's very possible that her hair is kind of just pushed against the wall, but it doesn't look like it, so I'm gonna call that a win. Now I'm gonna set these guys to the side and we're gonna open up my new beekeeper. Alrighty, here we go. I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that you know I'm excited. We're not going to spend too much time looking at it in the package because, well then there's no reason to open it and look at it. We've got ourselves a standard Barbie here. Then we've got a beekeeping table with some flowers, the bee house. We'll also get some honey and five bees to put inside our bee house. Beekeepers maintain bee colonies in hives where they make honey. They also produce beeswax for candles and lotions. Some beekeepers use colonies to pollinate fruit and vegetables. 
vegetable crops. Bees are important to the environment, so beekeepers do their best to protect them. Do you love nature? You could be a beekeeper. Also, just so you know, bees are becoming extinct. It is a very real thing. We need bees. They're very important to our ecosystems, to our world, to everything. We wouldn't have very much fruits or vegetables or plant life without them. Also, Doctor Who predicted that the bees were going extinct long before the rest of the world did. So, moral of the story, watch Doctor Who for scientific facts about the future. <laughs> Anyways, here we go. Barbie is out. And now our super important little bees. Ah, the honey! First things first, here is our Barbie. She's looking fabulous, wearing her white uniform with blue jeans and brown boots. Her gloves are removable, just like the astronaut Barbies were. And she's got a derpy finger as well. So it looks like they are being bent while the gloves are on. How unfortunate, my two favorite ones that I bought today have warped hands. I suppose it makes sense because they are the only two wearing gloves, but we might need to come up with a new way of putting these gloves on or wrapping their hands first to make sure that they're not being bent. Mattel, if you're watching this, try to look into that for me, okay? Thank you. Let's see how this one is. Please don't be bent. Oh gosh, no. <laughs> it's an epidemic. Okay, maybe if I leave the gloves off for a while, they'll warp back into shape. I'll leave it out for a day and I'll let you know. Let's take off her hat so we can see her. She's looking pretty nice. It's funny, if this was just a straight up white coat, she would look like a chef. She's got a bright pink elastic and any bald spots in there? It does not appear so, that's good. I don't want to take her hair out of this ponytail, so I won't be able to check how good her haircut is, but I want it to stay nice and clean like that, so I'll just leave it. Her face looks really clean and the makeup looks good. I don't see any defects. Something about her just seems a lot more plain and simple. I really like that. Maybe it's that they didn't give her any eyeshadow or anything. And let's check on her Velcro. See how that comes apart. Pretty good. Seems good. No rips or tears or anything like that. Her pants are just the elastic cord, but I'll check and see if there's any rips or tears or loose threads, and it does not appear so. And her boots, are they brought to us by Barbie or Ken? Oh, Barbie. And she's got a flat foot. Let's see if she can stand. Oh, so close. If we spread her legs apart, she can stand on her own. Pretty sure her articulation is all gonna be the same, or I guess lack of articulation, but we'll give it a check anyways. Legs, just at the pelvis or hip. None at the knee, none at the ankle, none at that wrist, none at the elbow, just a formed elbow. But she can, of course, go up and down and all the way around at the shoulder. And that's our Barbie. Get her stuff on and check out our bees. She needs to be protected. Here is our beehive thingamajigger. It is so cute, the perfect teal color. I love it. This is where our honey comes out. This is where we'll see the bees moving, making honey. There's a spout there to pour the honey into the jars. And on the back is where we drop the bees in, I guess. I don't know, or in there. I don't know. Down on the bottom, we have a little planter with some pink and red flowers that we could stick our bees right in them so that they can pollinate. So I'm gonna do that first. And let's get our bees going. We gotta collect some pollen from the flowers and that's how they work. If you are interested to learn more about bees and how they help our world, then I strongly recommend recommend checking out a book at your local library or maybe just watching an episode of The Magic School Bus. Miss Frizzle is very, very informative. Was it the Miss Frizzle episode or am I thinking of something else? I don't know. They dance to communicate, don't they? I think so. Anywho, our bees are now on our flowers down there. Here's our little honey bottles. I think it's hilarious that they always put honey in bear-shaped bottles. Like if it is an animal, it's always a bear one. Like, why is it being fed directly to the bear? Put it in a bee-shaped bottle. Doesn't that make sense? Pretty sure it's obvious that I love this so much because it's bees and it's kind of our thing here but yeah those bees are making honey and what's this this is where we can make tags for our honey and weigh our honey barbie is getting the job done guys not only can we put our bees down on our flowers but we can put them anywhere else on the place that where we find a small hole so that it looks like the bees have been flying around and landed which i really like we'll take our three remaining bees because if you don't have them in a hole or on the flower you don't want to lose them and the best way to store them is in the beehive of course so you can either just pull out the drawer and put them in there or drop them down the chute and ta-da, loving this set. All right guys, we are finally ready to move on to our last item of the day, which also happens to be the biggest, and that is of course the pet care center. I'll just point out that this is recommended for children over three as there are a lot of small parts, and it comes with over 15 pieces, but does not include any dolls. So if you get a set like this, remember to make sure you've got some dolls handy and you should be good to go. Here are the little critters that we get in this set. We've got a white fluffy cat, a little tan fluffy cat, a poor little poochie, and a small little hamster on a wheel. He's not running very fast right now because I've got it tipped, but it does move. Here on the back of the box, we can see two dolls 
who aren't included with this set engaged in pet care center duties. They're giving us some ideas of how you might position or play with your dolls once you've opened it. Just below the bigger image, we have four smaller squares showing us some of the features, like we could fill the sink with water, use a little x-ray machine, spin that cute little hamster that I showed you, and of course, close your set and take it on the go. I don't really want to stare at the box too long when we could open it up and see it in person, so let's just skip ahead and do that. This box is so big though. Change of view. All right, now we can see a little bit better. <laughs> there we go. That probably would have been easier if I opened it from the other side. We've got a teal see-through door and it's got little kitties and puppies all over it. And then a big pink heart with a paw print. Wait, what just happened? Oh, there we go. We've got a desk here. It's a really ugly looking wall. And, oh, Jen needs to make more room. I was gonna open this and show you guys the items as I take them out one by one, but it's actually very loud. So I went ahead and took out the largest of the items to show you and I'll save the smaller ones for later when we can set them all up. In that bag, we got a very tall chair. It's all blue with polka dots at the back. We got a purple scale to weigh our animals. We got a pink stethoscope and then we got an orange pet bed. And now I'm going to take my stickers and figure out where they go in the playset based on the instructions. This is gonna take me some time because I am me and I get distracted easily. So uh, we're gonna speed that up for you. Here are all of our small items. We'll add these to the playset next. First up is three food dishes or water dishes, whatever you want them to be. We have pink, blue, and purple. They have a diamond pattern all the way around and little bows just on the front. We have some kind of pump bottle. Might be lotion, might be soap, you decide. We've got a baby bottle because while these pets are in our care, they're gonna need to be fed and some of them might be babies. We've got some kind of medicine bottle Maybe it's to clean up some cuts. We've got a light orange hairbrush. We've got a purple ball of yarn. It's actually really cute. I always think small mini balls of yarn are really funny. I don't know why. Next up is a little dog bone. It's got a little paw print right in the center. And these here are actually little mobile charms. They're gonna hang over top of that little bed that I thought looked like a nursery room. We've got a green chick, a pink Barbie heart, and a blue flower. We'll add those in a minute. We have that pink stethoscope that I showed you earlier. And lastly, we have a Barbie leash. You can't have Barbie stuff without Barbie all over it, right? Now we'll add the charms. You know, you'd think there would have been a little knob or something on top of the playset so that you can spin this, but there isn't. And now I'm just gonna randomly place things, but I'll kind of place them where I see them in the images on the box because they sort of make sense. Now that our playset is all filled up and fabulous, it's time to open our little critters. That was easy. First up, we have this cute little dog. Don't know what the breed is, but it's adorable. It's all brown, big bright eyes, cute little nose, and it looks like it's got a sore paw. It's like a little orange cast there. The legs don't move or anything, nor does the tail, just the head. And then there's a little pink bandana on the front, which is removable. I think we can take the cast off as well. Yep, because it's all better now. The inside of the legs are hollow, if that matters to anybody. I'm not noticing any paint defects, and that makes sense because there's not very many spots that they could be. It's just one, two, and three, and they all look fine to me. Next up is this super sweet little kitten. It's a very, very light cream color. This one feels a bit more rubbery than anything else. It's got a few holes on the bottom. That might even fit on a pencil if that appeals to you. The tail doesn't move or anything, neither do the ears or the head. This one is straight up sculpted plastic, and it's meant to look like it's got long fur. The only part Parts painted once again are the eyes and the nose and they all look pretty good it's hard to tell because everything is so small they just look like black dots but there's no paint defects here either and this cat is just straight up cuteness next up we have this adorable little brown hamster in a wheel Whee! I really like this this is entertaining I would put this on top of a pencil just so I had something to do <laughs> So it's hard to see the face of it, Ooh, but it's a little brown hamster and it's just got a black dot for an eye and also on this side. There is no little paint defect in that one black little circle. So that's good news. The wheel itself is see-through and a very nice tealy blue color and then the base is all pink. One more run. It's a fast little hamster. 
And lastly, we have one more cat. This one's harder to see because it's white, so I'll use my hand as a background. It's got a molded body, so once again, the head will not rotate, nor will the tail. Whoop, dropped it. It's hollow underneath, and it's meant to look like it's got long hair. The eyes look good, the little nose looks good, but there is a little bit of paint on the cheek. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to get that off. It's not scratching off. Darn. Of course it had to be on the white cat too, didn't it? But otherwise she looks pretty sweet. There we go guys, there are our pets. Hard to see that white one there. And now we can add them to the rest of the scene. The first thing I'm noticing is that my doll might have one leg shorter than the other because she tips no matter what, even if I kind of, oh, never mind, I lied. She's standing. Woo, take that back. Never mind. Nope, never mind. I have to lean her against something and she always seems to be tipping. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I've got a crooked house. We'll go with that. Maybe it's my fault. Here is our chair. And the problem that I'm finding is with these newer Barbies that do not bend, that they're really, really stiff. She just looks very uncomfortable. I'm going to take you over here so you can see what happens in this room. This is more the medical room, actually medical room where the doctors will take care of the pet. We've got the dog x-ray, the cat x-ray, and the hamster x-ray. And this drawer opens and closes so you can put them in there for safe storage. And that's pretty much the end of that room. Moving on to this room. These green things can fold flat or open up wider. And on the stickers we can see washcloths, all that great stuff. We've got our little towel behind it, more shampoos and stuff like that. And then our little pump bottle, which I'm thinking now might be soap or shampoo. Or falling. And this is where we give the animals a bath. It doesn't actually provide suction or squirting or anything like that, like LOL toys, but you can put water in there. However, if you do put water in there, you gotta lift it up and dump it out because there's no drainage, which sounds like a silly thing to say, but sometimes people might expect there to be. Over here, we've got our little nursery area for newborn animals. We've got our doctor and of course, vet Jenny. She's taking our pup with the sore leg for a walk. We've got our little kitten here, fresh as the day she was born with the little bottle and the brush. And of course that mobile that does doesn't have a piece to help it move. And then we've got our little hamster on a wheel. And over here, I did add the weigh scale so you could put your little pets on there. There's no drawers or doors or anything that open on this side, but you can add things to the shelf and move things around anywhere else in the place that, that you want. This little grass area here flips out so that you can flip it back in when you need to close it. And the last area is literally just this chair and this fold out table that tucks away nicely when you fold it up. We've got some puppy posters on the wall over there, a little computer screen and a chair. Oh, Dr. Barbie fell. She's taking a snooze. That's how you get fired, Barbie. That's how you get fired. Now, just as simple as it was to set it up. Haha, ha, that took a little while. It'll be just as easy to clean up and store. All you gotta do is make sure everything is tucked away inside, close it up, and don't shake it because the windows are open, so you might lose your pieces that way, but just be careful. What can we do here? Maybe that fits in there. Let's see if this works. Is it working? No, it's not working. It's the chair. Ooh, okay, if you put the chair on top of everything, boom, you got yourself a travel case with a door that leads you straight into desk and furniture. Hope you feel like crashing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The last little thing is this cute handle. Got a dog head and a kitty head. Take it and go. Okay, guys, I've opened up all the play sets and all the dolls, and I have to say that overall, I'm very happy with everything. I have only two complaints, and they are that all the dolls are too stiff. It's gonna be hard to make them sit, stand, or get dressed, and even pose them without them wanting to fall over, because they're like top heavy and bottom heavy in different places that it makes it a little hard for you to do those things. And the last complaint, the astronaut and the beekeeper both came with gloves and ended up with warped fingers. Like they look a little freaky. Other than those things, pretty happy. In total, this should have cost me $145 before tax and I ended up paying 102 after tax. So I'm pretty happy with the scores that we got at the Barbie event. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing of all the stuff that I grabbed while I was at Barbie's 60th anniversary event and maybe you are just as excited as I am about this beekeeper. Okay guys, now comes the very important thing. I need to find out whether or not there's an actual audience for these Barbie items, whether new or old. Are you interested in seeing my vintage collection? Because I could be the person to annoy everyone and open some new inbox things from like 20 years ago. I would be that person. I would be excited and terrified and secretly enjoy and hate it, but I would do it and I have a lot right over there. Anyways, if you had zero interest in this Barbie video whatsoever and you don't want me to do anymore, I need to know that too, but just know there will be a few more because like I said, they're already over there, but at least I know not to do more after that and it would save me money in the future. So get clicking and let me know what you think. If you know somebody who loves Barbie, new or old, and you think that they would enjoy this video or just my content in general, then please do not hesitate to share it with them. We are slowly growing and it's all because of you guys. Thank you so much. And if you enjoyed it yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know 
anything you want to down below, whether it's just a friendly hello or, um, uh, hey Jen, I hated this video, don't do it again. I appreciate them either way. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! That's a new one, I hit my knee. <sighs>